This episode is part of the Season 2 series on self. Welcome to another episode of Art Heals All Wounds, where we explore the intersection between art and well-being. I'm your host, Pam Uzel. When I was in the fourth grade, I broke my arm. I broke it way up at the top near the shoulder, so I wasn't even going to get a cool cast for people to sign. I essentially had to have my arm taped to my torso for six weeks. I couldn't run. I couldn't swim. I couldn't even take a bath. And it was in the summer. I couldn't imagine how I would get through those six weeks. But those six weeks transformed into a time of magic. I discovered the world of J.R.R. Tolkien's books, first The Hobbit, then The Lord of the Rings trilogy, followed by The Cimmerillion. They say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. My daughter, Allegra Telemac, is an avid reader as well, particularly books that deal with magic and the supernatural. I didn't really understand, though, how important these types of stories have been for her. Allegra has spent her teenage and early adult years grappling with the label of disability. It was a label that frightened her, and the discomfort of being different was something that made her push away this identity of having a disability. How would she find the magic in her difference? Allegra Uzel Talamac is a visual artist who creates illustrations and also writes. An enormous fan of acting, singing, and other performance, she's also an avid reader and movie watcher. Her story is part of the art she creates, but she also writes modern fairy tales, complete with all the darkness and magic that most fairy tales contain. Some of her favorite subjects for drawing are mythical or supernatural creatures in human form. Allegra was born with congenital myotonic dystrophy. It was only with her birth that I discovered that I was the carrier of this genetic disease. Although I've started to develop some mild symptoms now, at that time I was completely asymptomatic. Because I'd been adopted in a closed adoption, I knew nothing of the health history of any biological family members. I had no experience with disability at that time. Myotonic dystrophy is more common in adults, and we knew of no other children with it. So we left the diagnosis with no clear picture of how it might affect Allegra. While Allegra did show some physical symptoms as an infant and toddler, she was passing all the normal milestones. With the passage of time, though, Allegra has experienced much greater symptoms. In this episode, we talk about some of the creative work that she's done to come to terms with the idea of having a disability. Before we meet today's guest, I want to tell you about an app called Newsly. Newsly is an all-in-one audio super app for iOS and Android. There really hasn't been an app like Newsly before now. Newsly picks up all of the trending articles on the web and reads them to you in a natural human voice. You can find any topic you're interested in, sports, politics, or art. I've loved using this app. I listen to it when I'm commuting or when I'm gardening or while I'm cooking, any time where I want to catch a little bit of news, but my hands are full or I can't stop to read. You can also find trending podcasts from over 50 countries on Newsly, including Art Heals All Wounds. Newsly has become my go-to listening app for podcasts. If you want to try Newsly yourself, just download it from www.newsly.me. And if you use the promo code ARTHEALS, you'll get a free one-month premium subscription. 
I'll include all of this info in the show notes so that you can just click on the link and use the RTLs promo to get your free trial. Now, let's meet this week's guest. Hi, Allegra. Hi. Is it weird being a guest on my podcast? Yes. <laughs> so we, for the past over a year, have been talking about creating a zine out of this piece of writing that you did and the pictures that you drew for it. And we finally finished it yesterday. So now I'm wondering if you'll read the writing from the zine for us. Sure. How the world sees disability. People with disabilities populate this world. Some are hid from the world and locked away in asylums. But some are walking among you. We see you, we walk past you, and we live in this world. You see us all just one way, crazy, insane, stupid. We aren't. We're vampires, witches, elves, werewolves, and aliens. We are completely normal, but the world we see is strange and full of things we don't understand. We may not even be the same by physical things. We are foster kids, homeless, and hopelessly in love, disabled by fear, or disabled by rejection. We may not understand some things, but it's not because we're stupid. We learn differently. We can't always explain things. You can't always explain things. Are you sure we're so different? Thank you. Why were you giggling while you were reading it? Um... Because I heard a squeak in my voice. Uh, I hear those too. <laughs> my voice a lot. So I want to talk about this book. And can I look at it for a second? So what took me by surprise the first time I read this was this page. We're vampires, witches, elves, werewolves, and aliens. Why did you add these things in a book about disability? Because for a long time, I've been more ashamed of having a disability than anything else. Hmm. And I'm not sure how many people in the world feel that way, but I do. And so I thought maybe if I turn it into something I like, like the Harry Potter things and the Narnia things... Maybe I'll feel better about it and not see it as a disadvantage, more see it as a gift or something special. I didn't know that, that that's why you chose these. Did it work? At times it works. <laughs> there are some times when it still is a disadvantage, but most of the time it works. Mm. Why did you write this book? Well, I wrote the pieces that are in the book because we were told to write a piece about disability. Not everybody wrote about disability, because some people just didn't want to do that assignment. So they wrote about different things. But I wrote about disability because I can actually talk, speak on it, because I have a disability. And so I thought I'd write about it instead of drawing a picture to show it. Well, so when you say we were told, can you can you say youth. So YSA is Youth Spirit Artworks. What is that place? Can you? It's an art studio for at-risk youth. I see. And you've worked there since you were about. How old were you when you started working there? I started when I was probably 17. Okay. And then I worked there throughout the years. And now you're 27. Yes. So one thing if you're willing to talk about it. Can you talk about this feeling of shame of having a disability? What? When did you start feeling that? Well, when I was in elementary school and I found I was called a disease, I found it really interesting. And I went to school telling everybody I had a disease. And nothing really showed that I was behind. I felt on par with everybody else. And then... I was told I was held behind, and I, whenever that meant, I didn't like the sound of it. So I said I wasn't. 
But then I realized I saw other people that had disabilities and how messed up they seemed, even though they weren't. They're just different. And I decided maybe I look like that to the rest of the world, and I don't really want to. I just want to look like the other people. And I started to make friends with people that didn't have disabilities. And I used to try and act as much as I could like them because I wanted to be what people call normal. And I don't know, I just it just always stuck with me that the idea of those people that were different from me but still had disabilities. And I sort of decided that I was going to turn it into a game and find that's how I would find my true friends. If I hung out with them for a day and the end told them I had this disability and I saw them again, I could be friends with those people. If they never contacted me again and avoided me, then I didn't need them. Hmm. And when you say you turn it into a game, is that what you're talking about? Just like the way of how to choose friends? Yes. I feel like I have to ask, have you changed your view on what you used to think of when you saw people with disabilities? I think I changed my view when I went to STAR and saw all the different disabilities that people had. I used to think that disabled people were scary and... I didn't want to be around them, but when I got to the star and everything, I saw that disabilities don't make you necessarily scary. They're just, there's so many different kinds. It's not really different. It's just unusual, and people don't understand that, so they classify it as scary and crazy and stupid. Mm-hmm. And star is star academy, where you went to high school? Yes, and eighth grade. An eighth grade. And that's a community of people with disabilities, which is, is that why you felt like, is that how you became more comfortable with this idea of disability? It's partly that. Um, Also, I just felt normal because not one person in any of the classes didn't have one. Every single person had a disability. So it wasn't like, oh, we're all disabled. It was... This is my community of people that understand what I go through. I understand partly what they go through. So it's really interesting because you finished this book yesterday. We listed it on Etsy. And you've already sold many copies. (laughs) Eleven. You've sold eleven copies, which is amazing and which is really great. And... For people who don't have disabilities, what do you hope that they'll get out of this book? If they're like me and trying to hide it, I hope they don't hide it. I hope they just sort of brush off what anyone says about them and believe in their abilities that they do have just so they can continue and not feel bad or like they're so different, Mm -hmm. even if they are. Mm Mm-hmm. And then I I wish people could see this book and some of the drawings. One thing that I always have a question on, and I've kind of asked you, is that the drawing that goes with the We're Vampires, Witches, Elves, Werewolves, and Aliens is one of my favorites of your drawing. It's like your vampire self-portrait. Is that supposed to be you? It wasn't even really supposed to be for this book. I don't even remember what the assignment was I think it was self-portrait and when we do self-portraits they give us a way to do it like either do it like how you look to the world or how you see yourself and whenever they say um you're supposed to do it that way and I asked Jimmy when he gave us this assignment if I could do all my alter egos and mythical creatures he said sure if you want to this is your self-portrait you can never do whatever you want. Mm. So that's how that came to be. Well, I love this one. It's got you. You do have your vampire fangs. You're wearing a shirt that says, I am who I am. And like some skinny jeans and some black boots and a long black coat. It's my Hogwarts robe. Oh, it's your Hogwarts robe. And then on the front, though, you have this person that you have named Annabella. And 
I don't know very much about Annabella and why she's important to you. I was strongly urging the, the vampire self-portrait go on the front cover, and you were, it was your book, and you said, no, this picture of Annabella is going to go on the front book. So describe Annabella, what she looks like, and who she is, and why she's important. Well, um, I'm really into fan-made films uh, that have to do with Harry Potter. Mm. And she was based on a character in a fan-made film called The Black Sisters, or The Sisters of Black. And I based her off Narcissa Malfoy when she was younger. I just changed her name, but sort of the scenery and what she's wearing and holding are more Narcissa Black than, than Annabella. I just named her Annabella to make it more my own drawing than a Harry Potter drawing. Well, that's interesting because she is holding a wand, but what's the thing she's holding in her right hand? Every clear means. <laughs> I had no idea that those were every flavor beans, but now that you say it, okay. I didn't know she was from Hogwarts, but she's got, does she have headphones on? No, those are earmuffs. Ah, I thought they were earmuffs, but then I started doubting myself. And then the second picture is a picture of someone riding the BART train. Yes. And you, the BART train has been a huge part of your life. And so is that lady, for, um, a, for a specific reason. Oh, who is the lady? I don't know exactly who the lady is. But I found her really inspiring because she's not only blind, which is why she's a dog in sunglasses, but she's also deaf. So she had all these disabilities. She had blindness, she couldn't hear, and she had a guide dog that I think was not just a guide dog, but also a companion. Wow. So I just, I knew that she couldn't see that I was staring at her. So I sort of just looked at her this whole time I was on the bar, just wondering what her life was like, wishing I could talk to her. I never did. Mm, I had no idea. So I drew a picture of what I got to YSA. That's very cool. And then you also have this picture that has two sides. And one of them, on the left-hand side, it says her world. And there's someone who's walking sort of, it looks like in a forest. And does she have, she looks sort of like a warrior. She's an elf. She's an elf. And then it has another... Um, it looks like a girl sitting at a table, and it says special ed. I sort of got that two perspectives. It's the same girl, but I sort of got it from once upon a time, how they're in their world, and they're different, and then they come in our world, and they're different yet again. And so I got that from this one, just showing that elves might seem like they need more help just because they learn from, like, the trees and the animals. So when they come into our world and learn from another person and teachers, it makes them seem a little slower than they actually might be. Oh, wow. Kind of how I felt in school. Right. And then this one is another one with two panels. And these actually just explain on the left, it looks like, is there a rainbow behind this person on the... It wasn't supposed to be a rainbow. It was just supposed to fill up the background. Uh-huh. I didn't know what to put in the background. <laughs> Um, I sort of saw it more as a sunset or a sunrise. Ah, uh, yeah. What do these two people symbolize? Werewolves. Werewolves. Ones look like what they're allowed to look like where they're from, more hairy and werewolfy ish. And then in our world, they sort of change yet again into more of a human looking person. Okay. And then the last one is. It says her world and life on the left, and then you have a person who's sensitive to the sun in our world. So what are these two? Yet again, it's the same person, just in different worlds. And this one's a vampire, mm. and they can't handle sunlight. So I just showed how she used to live in a dark dungeon place where there's no windows. And then in our world, she's trying to walk out in the sun, and it's painful. Mm. So I don't think I really realize 
this idea of two worlds. It's almost like parallel universes. Is that often how you think of things? Like you you imagine them in their world and then in a different world? I don't know if I ever thought about it that way necessarily. It usually just came up when we started doing the disability workshop. Mm. I started to think about it, but I didn't think about it that way. I thought about it once upon a time way, mm. which is why I used their world and our world mm -hmm. instead of other words. So it's people who have differences, but there is a universe where that's actually a strength or a very normal quality. And then they just happen to be stuck in a world where that's considered or that becomes a disability. Yes. Where they are, there's werewolves, aliens, all kinds of things. And there are some aliens, like people say, in the in space. And that's why I feel like we're also aliens, because we come from a planet where everything's edible. And we come down here, and there's things that some people can't eat, or some people don't want to eat, um, like vegans and vegetarians. And so that's why I put aliens into this universe and into my head to make it more understandable why people can't handle eating some things. Mm. And I think it makes it more fun to go out into the world and not necessarily tell everybody what they are because some people are not on board with it. I have a friend who's not on board with it at all. And... um But most of the people I talk to are really interested in hearing what I see them as. Mm. So I know a lot of elves. I know witches. I know vampires. I know werewolves. I know hybrids that are werewolf and vampire. <laughs> Lydia is a hybrid. Lydia is your sister. Yeah. Is she on board with being a hybrid? She doesn't seem to care. She was interested on in why I say she's a werewolf or a vampire, but she's not offended or anything. She's just curious. Mm. And so when you say you know these people, most of them find it also fun to be categorized that way? Most just... of the people are in YSA that are really on board with it. Alex and Spencer, who are my cousins, they're on board with it. They don't care what they are. They agree with whatever I categorize them as. And... Simone, my other cousin, she already, uh, she encounterized herself and her daughter. Mm. She's a fairy, mm. Simone, and her daughter is a mermaid. Mm. Do you have a category for me? Yes. I categorized you as an alien. An alien? Why is that? The reason I said you can't eat some things, it upsets your stomach. And I thought that It's mostly what I've noticed being around you. <laughs> It is funny. My first impulse is to feel like it's bad. It's not supposed to be because I'm also an alien. Oh, wow. Um, I feel like I have all the characteristics of every single mythical creature mm. that I've drawn in. Okay, but I really want to understand why are we both aliens? Mostly the things that we can't eat interesting because it's true we both have, share the digestive issues which are so not fun yeah so you draw a lot and you write a lot yeah can you talk about the books that you write you've written how many chapter books have you written i think maybe five because i go back and i rewrite some things so i've been stuck on like just five I think I can write more if I just kept writing. But just five, five is a lot. Yes, but I just think that with my ability, I can write more. So your books, from what I understand, it's it, they remind me of like books that we used to read a lot that are sequential with the same stories and the same characters, I should say, but a different story. So who are the characters in your book? Myself, just kind of altering a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Lydia. Same way, just old. That's your bit. sister. Alex. Um, your cousin. Except in the book, she's my sister. Mm. And she's also a little bit altered. Mm. 
Spencer, <laughs> your cousin. I sort of made him less mean than he was. Well, we shouldn't say Spencer is mean. Spencer he, is your cousin. He admits it. He admits that he's mean? Okay. And he's not anymore. Oh, good. Oh, that's true. Well, when he was little, he did do some mean things, but yeah. So I made him, I sort of twist, uh, flipped that into him having an attitude, but he's more protective of us mm -hmm. than he used to be. Mm -hmm. And what are the main plots of your books? I don't have a main plot of my book. Um, what I'm trying to do in my book is show I got tired of all the stories where you get to live in a castle, everything's good and happy, and you don't have problems anymore. I want to make a story where getting into a castle is worse than not being able to live in a normal house and do normal things like there's battles we have to fight and we get kidnapped and we have to follow certain rules that we didn't have to follow before. And it just is supposed to get worse and worse as the stories go on. Oh, I love that. So it's like what you get is not always what you expected when you wish for it. Yeah, like we're in a bad foster home in the beginning and we think that's bad. But when we get to <laughs> the castle, we find out it was not as bad as we thought. Well, I think that should be, I mean, I think you should do more zines, but I also think that you should find someone to work with you as an editor on your book and start thinking about getting those out. And then I'm just going to read your bio on the back of your book. So Allegra Telemac is an artist who explores disability, the supernatural, and difference. Her favorite books are the Chronicles of Narnia and the Harry Potter series. She is House Ravenclaw. So I know that you've taken the quizzes, and that's how you've determined your House Ravenclaw, but why else do you feel like you're House Ravenclaw? Well, the story about the houses or the quizzes that I took, when I was younger and liked Hermione and all these people that are in Gryffindor, I chose the answers that would get me into, into Gryffindor. <laughs> And then I decided one day that I'd just take it based on what I actually would do. And I got Ravenclaw and like, okay, I'm going to stay there because it was actually my truthful answers. Mm. And no matter what I get when I take the quizzes now, I know that I'm truly Ravenclaw. But I think I'm Ravenclaw because I've decided that I'm not going to care what people think about me. I'm just going to do what I like to do, what I enjoy doing. And I'm going to hold true to that. And I kind of feel like, based on who my favorite character in the Harry Potter series is now, it's very Ravenclaw-ish. Who is your favorite character now? Luna Lovegood. <gasps> okay. Well, so if people want to find your zine, where can they find it? They can find it on Etsy. And what's your store name on Etsy? Allegra Makes Scenes. Allegra makes zines. Capital A, capital M, capital Z. Yes, Allegra makes zines. And the name of the zine? How the World Sees Disability. Okay. Well, thank you for being on my podcast. You're welcome. <laughs> You're listening to Art Heals All Wounds. I've often thought that every bit of wisdom that I've ever found has been from reading, specifically reading fiction. This talk with Allegra today has shown me the value of seeking to understand yourself in this way, through stories, through metaphors, that clarify the mysteries of who we are and who we could be. If you want to learn more about Allegra's work, you can see her Etsy shop, Allegra Makes Zines, that's all one word. She has two more scenes in the works that should be available later in the year, maybe even later this summer. The music you've heard in this podcast is Yellow Light District by Lobo Loco. 
Beethoven's Piano Sonata No. 15 in D major was performed by Karine Golanian. The music you heard in the intro was by Ketza. This podcast was edited by Eva Hristova. Thank you for listening to this episode of Art Heals All Wounds. Give us a boost by sharing the podcast with a friend and following on your favorite podcast listening app. Thank you.